Hey, Urban Youth Workers, this is Jeff Wallace, and I'm super excited to be with you. For many of you, you know that recently I transitioned from 23 years in a local church to now being the executive director for an organization called Student Leadership University in Orlando, Florida. And, uh, and I'm so excited to be with you guys today. I want to share something with you because um, I love leaders. I think you guys are absolutely amazing. And because of you, the local church is in good hands. And I want to talk to you about the importance of understanding that God has called you to be a world changer. He's not calling you to be just a youth pastor or a youth leader or an executive director or a volunteer staff. He's calling you to be a world changer, to be an impactor of culture. How do I know this? Because Paul shares uh, something very significant with us in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.20. He says, hey, we are ambassadors of Christ. So what does that mean? It means that we're representatives of Christ. He says, as though God were making his appeal through us. So what that means is that when we say, hey, we're accepting this call to ministry, we're saying we're accepting the call to be a world changer. So what I want to share with you uh, for just a few moments is three very important principles about what it means to be a world changer. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the method of the world changer. What is the method of the world changer? Number one, the world changer, he has to know God's word for himself. You have to be a student of God's word. If you're not studying God's word, then you cannot be a world changer. You cannot share God's word with God's people if you don't know it for yourself. So number one, the method of a world changer is someone who knows God's word. The second method of a world changer is someone who is after, they have a heart after God. Their heart is so engulfed with God. I love my wife without reservation, unequivocally. That is my girlfriend. And because my heart is tied to her, there are certain things that I cannot do, or I will not do, or certain things I can't say because of the heart connection that I have with my wife. Well, likewise, when you have a heart connection with God, there are certain things that you just cannot say, you cannot do, and, and, and you're motivated by love. You're motivated by going deep in God's word. So the method of a world changer is one who has uh, the heart after God. They have a heart after God for themselves. Number three, they're bold and courageous. Listen, if you're going to be an urban leader, you can't be no punk. You can't be scared. You can't, you know, be afraid. Bold and courageous. That's what a world changer is. And you have to stand on God's word, have a heart that's connected to him. And when you do that, you're bold, you're courageous, you're strong. We also know that number four, the method of a world changer is he or she, they're faithful. They're willing to, to stay in the game for the long haul. You know, for 23 years, I stayed at the local church. I was able to see three groups of sixth graders graduate from high school. Why? Because I recognize that as a world changer, ministry is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And then number five, we know that world changers, they're submissive. Hey, if you're not willing to submit to God or submit to the authority of your leadership, then you can't expect other leaders to submit to you. So those are the methods of a world changer. But let's talk about the mistakes of a world changer. What's the mistakes of the world changer? Number one, sinful lifestyle. See, we're good when the lights and the cameras are on us, but what about those private moments in your life? It's a great mistake that we make as, as leaders if we think that our charm and our charisma, that's all we need in order to be world changers. No, God's saying, hey, what you do in private is just as significant as what you do in public. And number one and number two are kind of like, I should say they're like 1A and 1B because, you know, one mistake that we make, like we just talked about, is a sinful lifestyle. But then the second mistake is a lukewarm lifestyle. You're not really hot. You're not really cold. You're right there in the middle, you know. And, and so you can't be lukewarm either. So you can't be like kind of like, you know, I, I'm a little bit passionate or I'm halfway passionate. No, that's a big mistake. Or you only get up for the things that you get up for, the things that you like, but there's other things that you don't really kind of rise to the occasion on. That is a mistake of a world changer. So number three is the distractions. The distractions of the world changer happens where we always teach our students about, hey, you don't want to allow the social media, you know, world to distract you. But there's a lot of times in our own life, there's things that distract us from being a world changer. 
So we know that number one is a sinful lifestyle. Number two is a lukewarm lifestyle. Number three is the distraction. Number four is being disobedient. We don't do what we know God is calling us to do. We're disobedient and we, we are not willing to, to live out God's word holistically in our lives. And can I just tell you, that's sinful within itself. And so we know that, number one, we talk about the sinful lifestyle. That's a mistake. Two is the, the lukewarm lifestyle. Number three is the distractions of the world changer. Number four is being disobedient. But number five, and I want you to listen very closely, number five, is our lack of or our inability to be what I call an anticipatory leader, where we're anticipating what the future trends, where we're anticipating what's to come. We get so stuck in our ways that we don't anticipate what's ahead. We're so comfortable on the successes of yesterday. We're trying to deal with the ministry of today that we're not anticipating the challenges and the obstacles and the opportunities that's before us tomorrow. So I believe that that is you know, a mistake that world changers and leaders make. So we talked about the method. We talked about the mistakes. Now let's talk about the message. My message to you, world changer. First thing is I'll say this. Number one, you got to keep your relationship with God intact. You got to make sure it's, it's steady, it's strong. So that means that you have to have this private time that you need to devote with the Lord, whether it's early in the morning, late at night, midday, but there is consistent private time that you're having so that you keep your relationship with God intact. Number two, my message to you is you got to make sure that you keep your life holy. You want to make sure that your life is holy. You want to make sure that your life lines up with the word of God and that you are truly pursuing a life after holiness and righteousness at all costs. Number three, hey, my message to you, you got to have the heart for lost people. If you don't have a heart for the lost, get out the game, man. If you're not really here to, to make sure that heaven is filled with lost souls and that kids cross over the threshold from death to life and every lost kid that you come in contact with, you're committed to making sure that you introduce them to Jesus, you're not going to be a world changer. Then I would say number four is you got to remain accountable. My fourth message is this. Hey, if you don't have people in your life who's in your Kool-Aid or people who are in your life who are going to tell you that, hey, man, you know what? You're not this big hero like you think you are. Then you're wrong. You got to have people in your life that you're going to say, hey, I am going to be accountable to them. This is my tribe. And then lastly, I'll say this. You got to get out your comfort zone. God is calling you to do something greater than anything that you can think or, or imagine. It's one thing to be called. It's another thing to come out of your comfort zone. And I believe, guys, if you listen to these methods, you are proactive in your life and saying, hey, I'm going to make sure that I don't give into these mistakes. And then you're willing to be open and say, Jeff, I want to really kind of listen to the message. I believe it's at that moment you'll become the world changer that God's called you to be. Think the world of you guys. Have a great one. Be the leaders God, God's called you to be. God bless you.